My apologies about my cap this morning. I'm feeling like I need to be wear pink cap because I'm I'm a Pentecostal. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. Um, you know what? Uh, actually, I have a little situation here on the campus. Uh, so I might uh, need to be somehow gone, you know? So I'm just thinking about today's lesson, but I, I, I don't think it is necessary for us to cancel or postpone today's lesson. Let me see what I can do. But just before we start, I, I may just uh, ask you to understand in case that I need to be excused, okay? Uh, okay, sure. Yeah. Um, okay. You can go whenever you like. And it sounds like you want me to go. <laughs> <laughs> Is it kind of a false impression that I got? <laughs> All right. Okay, uh, let's get started. Let me ask Adele to lead us in prayer. Who, me? Yeah, Adele, can you? Oh, me. I'm Ethel. Yes, yeah. we will pray. Uh, we praise you. Thank you for your kindness and mercy to us, Lord. Just give you praise for all your... Please help us study your, your Hebrew language today. Sharks and a good memory. We pray that you would help us be successful. So that it was to help us in praise and glory. We ask for your help. For your joy and presence with us, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. Um. Oh, if you can, I thought still pray. It's okay. Okay. I'm glad I made it. All right, uh, let's turn to lesson, uh, let me see. Uh. Wait a minute. Sorry, I'm just exchanging some important message with other leaders. Um, let me see. Um, okay, lesson 15. Uh, okay, uh, I'm gonna this here and do this here right can you can you see the powerpoint that i'm showing you right now yes sir all right um uh, it's a bit hard to control this here come on What's wrong? Uh, just give me a second. Let me just give them one 
message. So probably they don't know I'm taking class right now. Okay. Mm. Please uh, read lesson fifteen by yourself. Okay. Is my PowerPoint big enough? No? Let me see. It's a bit complicated. Big enough for me anyway. Sorry. Uh, okay, I need to do this here. So my connection is not good this morning. Dominic, my voice is not really clear. It's fine here. It sounds clear here, sir. All right. Perhaps Dominic, it's yours. Okay. Yeah, it's, pro it's probably mine, sir. All right. Um, um, yeah, I'll, I'll try and... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Can you see my PowerPoint? Yes, sir. Let me make it larger. Now, I guess this is better. Yeah, much better. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, come on. All right back, sir. Okay. All right. Gonna ask John P to read. Pinhas, is there any problem with your video? <laughs> uh, it's okay, sir, but uh we were un announced that uh from 9 a.m we will not have uh el electricity here and so that yeah i just uh, opened two accounts sir. it's okay without without uh, i don't have any problem yet so. oh yeah you are here okay you account too yeah you opened the two okay um right um so would you read please oh, yes Vejimar Chizeki Yahoo El Yesha Yahoo and Ata Tup T 
T-U-B. Ah, um, and then, the, uh, the bar, Adonai, Alsh, Alsha, Asha, um, the, the, Ba, the bar, tar. Okay, thank you, Chompy. Uh, sounds like you're a bit struggling. And okay, uh, according to my experience with teaching previous Hebrew students, by this time, uh, you are supposed to do better in terms of pronunciation. It seems like. Um, you guys haven't really dedicated your time to Hebrew reading. Uh, this is something that I have just to come across recently. I'm thinking of giving you special quizzes. Uh, and that's going to be oral exam. Which means I'm going to schedule uh, a test individually with you. Yes. Uh, not only Chompi, but everybody. And the test will be about your Hebrew reading. So I'm going to show you a Hebrew, you know, uh, sentence or some sentences in my slide. And I'm going to ask you to read it. And I will evaluate it. Okay. It will soon come. Another test is your vocabulary and grammar tests. Because, you know, I know that Mm, most of you did a good job, but I also need to see how you guys are doing in terms of, um, you know, quizzes. So uh, I'm going to, having, you know, the individual test with you, uh, one on one, I'm going to show you maybe 10 to 20 vocabulary as a slide. And you need to let me know the meaning immediately so that I will see if you really have studied and memorized all those vocabulary. One thing that is really important regarding your vocabulary quiz is this. If there is a really big difference between the, the result of your oral vocabulary quiz and your uh, vocabulary quizzes that you have been taking so far, then I need to really consider um, re- uh, it's making little adjustment in terms of um, maybe increasing or decreasing because you are supposed to memorize all those how many words now 120 am i right and you must to know and then i just uh, ask you to take it, it whenever you want after friday i mean after the class on thursday until Friday class. But somehow, I really need to see how you guys are doing. So please be ready for this. You need to really make sure that you have memorized the vocabulary. And even I'm thinking about uh, taking out the vocabulary quiz from your final translate, I mean, final exam. When we'll all begin to method. Okay, I will do it again. All right, thank you. If you cannot understand me clearly, please ask me to do. All right. Okay. Uh, in terms of your quiz, I'm going to give you oral exam. Oral exam. What it means by oral test is that I'm going to make a schedule to meet you in June, maybe for 10 minutes, okay? What I'm going to do is to ask you to read the slides that I'm going to show you. That's going to be like this Hebrew sentence. So as I ask John P to read it, Vayomer is ki yahu el, Yesha Yehiahu 
top the bar at nine asher the bar ta. So something like this. So I'm expecting that your accuracy and fluency are good enough. Okay, considering uh, the time that we have spent together, because you know most of the time I found your Hebrew reading not really sufficient. As if you have not really, you know, dedicated your time for this Hebrew reading. So that's going to be one of your quizzes that you need to deal with having one-on-one -on -one Zoom meeting with me, not others. Is that clear? Okay. Number two, I'm going to show you uh, some slides of Hebrew words. Okay. That's going to be 10 to 20 vocabulary that you, uh, you know, out of 120 that you have memorized. So it's not like, you know, the normal trans, uh, vocabulary quiz you, that you have taken so far. It's not, you know, 20 vocabulary appearing in a paper, but I'm going to show you one word at a time, you know, moving the slide. And you need to let me know the meaning looking at the slide. Are you following me? So, Yes, it's sir. not going to be like 10 minutes given, and then I, I will give you, you know, the paper where you, you will see 20 vocabulary. No, I'm going to show you uh, 20 words, one word for one slide. And whenever I move the slide, then you need to let me know the meaning. All right. One thing that is important is this. That's going to be your opportunity. And also at the same time, under the evaluating, evaluation time, if I can see the really big difference, let's say you have been receiving really good grade for your mm, vocabulary quiz so far, you know, you, you got 18 or 19 or 20. And if I really test you and, and yet you got just the 10, then how can I really trust that you have been doing in your honestly your quizzes? You know my points, right? So, but I'm not really trying to know whether or not you are doing your best, but it's going to be another chance for you to mark up your quizzes because if you are doing really good job in the test and, then, and yet your vocabulary quizzes are not really that good, then that's going to be your chance to mark it up. Do you understand what I'm saying? But on the other way around, it's important too. You, you got just the 10 out of 20. And previously, you got almost perfect mark. Then how can I really give you the full mark? I need to deduct your um, quiz, the result of the quizzes that you have taken. So that's what I'm thinking. And another one is grammar. I'm going to ask you some grammatical questions like, hey, Pierce, why don't you tell me about uh, missing letter rule for first year old book. And you need to let me know everything that you have understood. Something like this. And I'm going to ask, Ms. let's say, Kanae, can you tell me about construct chain? And, you know, uh, I will see how good you are. It's, it has something to do with your understanding. All right. So I'm, I'm going to do it um, soon, but I haven't decided when. So please start memorizing your vocabulary and uh, do your best. If you haven't understand, uh, understood any parts of our previous lesson, make sure that you understand them. So you can ask your, um, what is it, group study members to help you with these grammars. So for the meantime, you have to start memorizing vocabulary again from number one to 120, and you need to start fully understanding the previous lessons. Is that clear? All right. Because, you know, this is um, a, a new journey, you know, in terms of teaching through online. So uh, I'm also trying different stuff and see what it work better. Okay. So please study more and dedicate more time for Hebrew and because you need to understand that this is not a subject that you are taking just for this trimester. My concern for you is that, you know, if you are not really doing good, 
I need to I need to say that you are not supposed to be merely surviving this course. It will be, you know, there will be continuation of Hebrew until Hebrew 4. So if you merely survive Hebrew 1, then I, I think you will be really um, in trouble in Hebrew 2. So I'm just kind of trying to help you in a sense, although, you know, by giving a pain of this quiz. But trust me, somehow it will work and it will help you. Um, Okay, FL, it will be okay. Just um, do your best. All right, do you have any question regarding this uh, oral test or quizzes? Is that okay? Seems like you are, you're panicking. <laughs> uh, don't worry. If you have done your best, uh, you don't need to be really worried about it. But I want you to be really ready for Hebrew too. That's why I decided to do this uh, in a sense that I want to really help you. Okay, let me move on if you don't have any question. All right, uh, the first one is va yo mer. Chombi va yo mer. And then the second one is he. So it's a ki. Kiss. And this one is vocal or silent? Silent. Silent. Because it's not preceded by a long vowel, so it should be silent. Kiz ki yahu. Kiz ki yahu. El. Ye. Sha. What is this? Silent. Silent, so we will just move on. Ye sha yahu. Tov, debar, adunai, asher, diba. What about this? Silent, because this is not a wrong bow point. So, dibar ta. Dibar. So, actually, it's not one syllable making the sound of a l, but you need to make this one as a one syllable like d, bar, bar, all right? Bar, not bar, okay? Not two syllables, but one. Di bar, di bar, ta. Do you understand? All right, I don't wanna spend much time here. Today we are going to talk about demonstrative pronoun, especially predicate Adjective. I think appears you have missed this uh, specific lesson, but it's good for you because uh, we are dealing with the, the lesson in terms of um, uh, predicative adjective. The focus is a bit different, but we will generally cover uh, the previous lesson. And we are going to talk about PL stem in relation to affix form. So there might be some important um, things that you need to pay attention to. Let me move on. I'm going to deal with the each slide today, unlike before. Okay, so when you're talking about predicative adjective, we need to understand that there is another uses of adjective that is attributive adjective. So you need to understand what it means by predicate adjective and attributive adjective. The focus of the previous lesson was attributive adjective. But today we are dealing with adjective in relation to predicate usage. All right, so you need to clearly understand what the differences uh, we can recognize in terms of appearance and the meaning. All right, it has something to do with the pronoun demonstrative pronoun and adjective that modifies uh, a noun. One more time. It has something to do with a component that modifies a noun, such as adjective and even them, uh, what is it? A demonstrative pronoun like this or that. 
Okay, when it comes to the uses of those uh, words, there are two possibilities of translation. Let, let's talk about this as an example. How are you going to use it? Something like, you know, if you have to put the translation for two words, the first one is this, and then the second noun is men. Okay, if you see these two Hebrew words, then what are the possible uh, translations? Number one, you can directly modify the noun. Then the translation will be this man. This man. It's not a sentence, but it is uh, a usage of an adjective. So in that case, if the, the word this modifies the preceding noun directly, then it is attributive adjective. The other translation is, this is a man. So can you see the difference between the translation, this man, or this is man? Of course, it's totally different, you know, translation. So when you have two words and one noun and one word that modifies the noun, like adjective or a demonstrative pronoun, then you always need to think about these two possibilities. Is that clear? Then when you are going to, when are you going to use it as a predicative adjective or attributive adjective? It depends on the agreement of these two words in terms of gender, number, and definiteness. So once again, it depends on the agreement of gender, number, and definiteness. To tell you the conclusion, if, it, if they are, I mean, these two words are in agreement of all aspects, gender, number, and definiteness, then that should be used as attributive adjective. When I talk about definiteness, then it has something to do with the presence of definite article he, which means the. Am I right? So as, as a review, let's just talk about attributive adjective here. As you can see that, that we have two exemplary words. The first one is ha mit, ham mitzvah. And you can see that this one comes with definite article he. And then the word is mitzvah, which means commandment. And the following word is a demonstrative pronoun meaning this. Do you remember je, jo, tu, hu, he, ele, ele, hem, hen? So je, jot means this, this. Who, he means that, that. Then what, what is the difference between this, this, that, that? Feminine, uh, masculine, this, feminine, this. Masculine, that. Feminine that. For the plural side, we have ele, ele, hem, hen. So ele, ele can be either masculine floater or feminine floater, meaning these. What about hem and hen? Hem means masculine floater, those. Hen means must a feminine plural those so you need to remember those uh, demonstrative pronoun if you are not really familiar with this go back to the previous lesson which is lesson 14 then you will see the chart for this okay but anyway so in terms of even demonstrate pronoun we do have gender and number so now jot is what j jot so j is masculine singular, jot is feminine singular. So in terms of gender and number, jot is feminine singular. What about mitzvah? It's a singular word, and then the special ending is a uh, he ending, which is normally the indicator of feminine noun. So you can see that this one, the preceding noun is feminine singular, and then the following word is feminine singular. So we can see the agreement between them in terms of gender and number. 
The last aspect is the definiteness. In terms of, if you see the definite article here, from both, actually, then there is agreement. Am I right? So you can see that the and the. So there is agreement between them in terms of definiteness. So in terms of the qualification of the agreement, there is agreement, the perfect agreement uh, in terms of gender, number, and definiteness. Then that is the case for attributive adjective. And then the translation is the modifying word should be modify. Modif should modify the noun directly. So the translation is, as I told you, jot means this, and mitzvah means commandment. So the translation is this commandment. If we didn't have the agreement of definiteness here, then the translation is not this commandment, but it would be this is commandment. Uh, Pierce, are you following me? Yes, sir. All right. So it modifies the noun directly, and it usually follows the noun and agrees with it in gender, number, and definiteness. So now look at this. Another example. Tall is an adjective and ish is a noun. So what is the relationship between them? The, the, the two possibilities of translation would be like a good man. Or the other possibility is the man, a man is good. Do you see the, dif the difference? So when we translate it as like good man, then that is attributive adjective that is modifying the noun directly. So can you see the definiteness agreement? In fact, we don't have the here and we don't have the here. So we can say that there is an agreement in terms of definiteness because it's indirect and indefinite and this one indefinite. So here, this is definite and this is definite. So the argument is not only for the case that we have the, the. So it applies. It is applicable to the case that we don't have the, the. So in this case, it is still modifying the preceding noun directly. The translation is good man. What about hat, ha ish, hatov? The translation would be the, Good man. Why? Because the, the. What about here? As you can see that ha, ish, and tov. So unfortunately, we have no agreement of definiteness between these two because in terms of gender and number, they are in agreement. But in terms of definiteness, only the preceding noun is carrying definite article he, while this following word doesn't. So there is no agreement in terms of definiteness. Then in that case, we need to apply predicate adjective usage. The translation is not the good man, but the man Sweet. is good. So you need to see the difference between this predicate adjective and attributed adjective. Is that clear? Yes, sir. I think this is new information that I haven't given you yet. All right. If you have this agreement of definiteness between these two words, then that's always for sure that it should be predicate adjective. All my time, whenever you don't have the agreement of the definiteness between these two words, then it should be translated with the concept of predicate adjective. Is that clear? Plus, if you have the, the, the agreement of definiteness, the, the, then it will be, uh, it will need to be understood as attributive adjective. So those two cases are quite obvious. But when it comes to the case that those two words are in 
agreement in terms of definiteness when they are not when they have no definite article a like this ish to I, as i told you there is agreement of definiteness because they don't take definite article a so there is agreement but we cannot always say that it should be understood as attributive adjective in that case we have even the possibility of predicative adjective sometimes so if you memorize it in a simplest way saying that oh whenever we have definiteness the agreement of definiteness then it should be attributed adjective no what is for sure right now is that when you have no agreement okay seeing one word carrying he and the other one is not taking any hair then there is no agreement then in, in that case that's for sure you need to use it as a predicative adjective and plus if you have the the then that should be most likely attributed to adjective but when you have no the no the although there is agreement in terms of definiteness as indefinite words you need to think about these two possibilities is that clear but there is one hint in terms of the difference between predicative adjective and attributive adjective in relation to the location uh, it's a good help uh, like the way we have tov here and then a noun pay attention to the location of the adjective if you see the adjective preceding a noun then it is most likely predicate adjective it is most likely i don't want to say it's always but generally speaking it works for many times then what if the adjective is following a noun not preceding following like top comes after the noun then it is most likely attributive adjective okay the number one principle that you need to rely on is that check whether or not there is agreement between these two words in case that they don't have agreement of definiteness then you just understand it as what predicate adjective that's number one principle that you can rely on number two if there is uh, the the okay if you see the the so there is an agreement of the happiness then you need to prioritize the possibility of attributive adjective but the, the most problematic situation is for the case that you have two words carrying no the the so you cannot see the the so in a sense if we rely on the previous uh, you know uh, information then we may say that oh there is agreement in terms of definite is indefinite indefinite then we need to understand it as uh, attributive adjective then it doesn't work sometimes then in that case you need to think about the location okay it will help you that's the time for you to apply this new information so two words one noun and one adjective then see the location of adjective so when the adjective precedes the noun then it's most likely it's a predicate adjective if the adjective follows the noun then that is most likely it's attributive adjective so when the the what is it it's opposite you know with english if you have okay how do we modify a noun with adjective normally you put the adjective before the noun good man handsome jun kim smart uh peers brave dominic okay it's kind samson am i supposed to go ahead okay <laughs> all right so yeah so in english when we modify 
uh, the noun. Normally, the adjective precedes, all right? But it is opposite in Hebrew. When you have the adjective before the noun, then it is predicative, uh, no, oh yeah, predicate adjective. So the translation should be something is smart or Jun is good at soccer or whatever you would like. Okay, so that, that is the information that I'm just talking about. Is that clear? All right. So um, in this case, Dibar is not taking definite article he. And tov is not taking definite article he. So in terms of the, the, the most important rules, then we can see the agreement of gender, number, and definiteness. Then, then you, you might think like, oh, this is time for me to apply the attributive adjective. No. I told you, when those two words are not taken definite article, hey, in terms of, although they have, you know, the, 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 what is it, agreement of definiteness, you got to be careful with it. Then what do you need to do? You need to pay attention to the location of the modifying word. In this case, top is adjective. So when the word, the adjective is preceding the noun, then the translation is not attributive, but predicative. Then the translation is not good words of the Lord. Okay, the, the bar Adonai is words of the Lord. Am I right? Are you following me? So what is your translation? Is it good words of the Lord or the word of the Lord is good? What is our translation? Tell me. Second one. Yes, because that's predicative adjective. Is that clear? All right, then let me just move on with this. Let's continue to this. Asher is a relative pronoun connecting the following word to the preceding words. So, in fact, this is modifying the preceding words. So, we are going to put that for our share. What about the barta? So, oh, it sounds familiar with actually the ending. So, ta, nothing, ah, ta, tu, ti, u, tem, ten, nu. So, nothing. That's not no. What is, and then if you have nothing at the end, then that's uh, what is indicator of three M S G F X form. Nothing. Ah, ending is what three F S G F X form. Ta is what two M S G F X forms. So we have a fixed form. So the root letter is what dalet bet resh and dabar. And you are always confused with this dabar. Why? Because it seems like, I don't know, it looks like even noun dabar. But I told you before, if you have the dagesh, which is carried by the middle letter, then it is always PL stem. And that is not a noun, but a verb. So if you are confused to know whether this one is noun or verb, Pay attention to the presence of dagesh forte in the middle root letter. So whenever you have the dagesh, then that should be pl verb. Is that clear? So then we are done. Root letter, dabar, stem, pl, form, affix. What about pgn? I told you, 2, m, s, z. What about special future? Nothing. Because we don't, we don't see anything connected to the word. All right? And meaning, what is the meaning? The tense. Okay, put the subject to MSG means you. All right, you. And what about the tense for a fixed form? Future or past? Past. Past, past. right. So what is the meaning of the bar in, in the PL stem? To speak. So the, the final meaning is you spoke. Is that clear? All right, then what is our translation? The word of the Lord that you spoke is good. We are done here. Clear? One more time. 
the word of the Lord that you spoke is good or was good. So the tense will be dependent on the main verb and the context. So when we look at this given sentence, we can put is or words. So one more time, the word of the Lord that you spoke is good or was good? Two are possible. Okay. And then let's finish this one. Biomed, I think it's, 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 it's nothing special anymore. I told you. What is it? Amar. Kaistem. Why? Because we don't have Dagesh Pote. And prefix form because of the yod. And 3MSG because of the yod. Vav conversive special feature. The meaning. And he said. All right. So whenever you have biomer, biomer, then just, you know, you need to automatically decide it. Hey, I know biomer. Amar Kai prefix 3MSG, Vav conversive, and he said. Okay, nothing new. We are always dealing with this. Why are you mad? Okay, so who is the subject here? The, sub the real subject follows the preceding verb. Hiskia, who? This is the king, Hiskia. Okay, the name. So Hiskia. And Hiskia said to, can you guess who this is? Ye Sha Yahoo. Isaiah. Isaiah. Good, good guess. That's Isaiah. All right. So that's a Hebrew name. That's how I write, uh, how we write the Hebrew name Isaiah. Do you have any question regarding this? What, re what is really um, important here is to, to distinguish the difference between predicate adjective and attribute adjective in terms of the agreement and appearance. But let me highlight the most important thing here at last. Ambiguous construction is ish tov. It can be either a good man or a man is good. A good man is attributive adjective. A man is good is predicate adjective. Um, but although we cannot say anything for sure, in this case, what are you going to do? You need to pay attention to the location of the modifying adjective. Where is it? The top is actually following. If it is preceding the noun, then that's most likely predicative adjective. But in case that it is following the noun, then it is most likely it is a attributive adjective. And that's the new lesson that we have dealt with today. Is it clear? So can All I right. ask a question, please? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Um, yeah, just in terms of the agreement, what about if you had a noun that was a proper noun? So a, a name like Moses or Egypt or something, and you had like uh, Zot, Moshe, this Moses, um, you already know that Moses is definite. So would it still carry the, the hey, the ha? Okay. That Thank makes you for the sense. question. Yeah. Actually, I was almost hesitant to talk about it today. Like today's case, am I right? Because what uh, Pierce is asking about is this. Although we, then, we cannot see that the, the presence of definite article he before the bar, but since it is modified by the definite name, pronoun, Adonai, then it becomes definite. Do you remember when we are talking about construct chain? So the, there was a time that the, you need to put the, although you have no definite article here. Since the preceding noun is modified by uh, what, what is a proper name. So in that case, in terms of English and the translation, you need to put the. So when you are talking about uh, the agreements of definiteness, you always need to pay attention to the physical uh, attendance or existence of definite article here. So not meaning. 
So in this case, since we cannot see the here, definite article, hey, not in terms of the grammatical application, but the physical being, the presence of definite article, hey, then in this case, you need to treat it as if we don't have definite article, hey. So when we are talking about definite article, hey, in relation to the agreement, then just pay attention to the real presence of definite article here. Does it help, Pierce? Uh, yes, so that helps. So you would, you'd never have hazot moshe, for example. You just have zot moshe because they would both agree, wouldn't they? Oh, okay, that's another case. Then hazot moshe because moshe will not take definite article here. Yeah. All right. Both be and then I think that's a bit tricky case. In that case, you need to think about. Uh, mostly, I think it's predicative, you see, this is Moses. Because mm. I think in Hebrew, the concept of this Moses is not really common. Okay. okay? Yeah. 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 And although at the same time, you will definitely know through the context. So that's what I can say. So in terms of grammatical aspect here, it is general guidance that works most of the time, but I need to tell you that it's not you know, applicable to every single case. So yeah, that is just given information as a general guidance, okay? Thank you for the question. Let me move on. And all right, peer of fixed form. Let me just uh, quickly highlight some important parts here. What is special about this? Do you remember uh, what, what, what we expect in terms of a vowel points in, when we are dealing with a fixed form? I told you, look at this card and peer. And then we have card and the vowel points are quite important here. I told you, you don't need to pay attention to the, the presence of a vowel point unless they are uh, not really important. So here, why is it kamets and pata? And then it's important that you know, most of the, the first little letters, no matter what PGN, they are taking what? Comment, except 2MPL and 2FPL. So it helps, especially in terms of 3MSG. You need to always remember, you know, the name so that you will be able to extract the vowel point from the name. It's a car, so we say ah. Ah, it's a PL, so we are going to take this vowel sound from the name and we get E L. Do you understand? So, in terms of 3 MSG, you can expect these all vowel points. But when it comes to other pigeon like 3 FSG, which is taking an augment at the end, then it affects the preceding vowel. That's why, you know, this tere becomes shua. And here, pata, pata. So all those new addition affect the preceding vowel points. So you cannot really expect that the second vowel point will work for every PZN. Then what are you going to do? Remember this. Just for three MSG of fixed form, you can expect the all vowel points most of the time. But when it comes to the other PGM like three FSG, two MSG, then what do you need to do? You have to pay attention to the first vowel points. That's it. Okay. Still, the first vowel points works. E e e e e e e e e e. That's really important. And in terms of uh, the stem. You need to pay attention to the presence of Dagish Porte. So it still works. It still helps you to recognize and determine the stem. Why is it important for us to pay attention to those things? Because you need to analyze the stem and then form. Are you following me? Why is this so much important? You need to pay attention to the first two bow points to know the stem and the form. Um, the ordinary bow point, the first bow point for custom must be comment. 
except two ampere and two ampere. So this is the thing that you need to remember. Okay, why did we deal with this? Because of this. Okay, of course you know that this is a PS10 because of this Dagesh, and then I know this Tab and Ta ending is a fixed ending, so we 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 didn't have any problem. Are you following me? When we try to determine the form and stem, but why? Why do we need to deal with this today? What if we have a verb with which the second root letter is cultural? Then what will happen? The dagesh cannot come because cultural letters and resh cannot take dagesh. So we cannot be always dependent on the presence of Dagesh Forte. So this is what I always emphasize, okay? All right. If you have a middle guttural verb, you got to be careful with the stem all the time. Do not simply put kal because of the fact that you cannot see Dagesh, okay? The important tip is this. When you have a middle guttural verb, then do not simply put kal because you do have PS stem. Then what is the difference between these two? All right? Okay, we are dealing with a middle guttural verb. And Pastor, tell me, then how am I going to determine, you know, whether this one is PL or kal? What do you expect? When the dagesh cannot come, then what do we normally expect? Can you say anything? The lengthening of the vowel. The lengthening. The first root letter. Exactly. So, you know, in fact, Dageshi Forte doesn't simply come for PL stem. Like even definite article He. Definite article He comes with He, Pata, and Dageshi Forte. But yeah. there are some words of which first two root letters are cultural. In that case, we cannot put the Dageshi. So what? happen lengthening in the preceding vowel point. Do you remember? So sometimes pata comes in the form of a comment for the following word that takes a uh, cultural letter. It's the same. All right, then as a lengthened form for hire, okay, if we have a middle cultural letter here, not cough, then what did happen? We cannot put the dageshi here. Are you following me? Are you following me? Then what did happen? This preceding vowel point should be lengthened. So in terms of lengthening for hirek, what do you expect? Yeah. Can you tell me? Tere! Praise the Lord. I'm glad to hear someone saying tere. Can I move on? Let me see. Uh, where are you? Yeah, here. So we are talking about middle guttural letter here. So as you can see that this is middle guttural letter and PL form. So now, when you look at berek and sometimes berak, yeah. you think, oh, this one is ka. I told you, if you are dealing with a guttural, uh, what is it, uh, middle guttural verbs or middle rash verbs, then you gotta be careful with the stem. Why do you think this is PL? Because the ordinary uh, vowel point under the first root letter should be comment in case of custom. Are you following me? But it is tere. Why? Because it's lengthened from hirek. Clear? So I hope you understand this one clearly. So as uh, praise the Lord, we have it works for every PGN. So today, the most important lesson that we need to remember is this. Apart from adjective and you know predicative, uh, uh, predicative and attributive adjectives, this is the most important lesson that we need to pay attention to. When the dagesh for the PS stem cannot come because of the presence of middle guttural letter, then what do we normally expect? Lengthening in the preceding vowel point. It is the 
um, application that you can apply not only for a fixed form, but even for the prefix form. Why? Because whether it is a fixed form or prefix form, for the PSTEM, we do expect the Dagish port. But whether it is a fixed form or prefix form, middle gutter verb cannot take Dagish. Then in terms of the indicators of PL prefix form for the middle gutter letter, what do you expect? Lengthening. lengthening. Then what kind of a lengthening then? Then yeah. you need to know the most typical uh, vowel point for car stem. Then you need to you know, see the lengthening from the ordinary vowel point. Like the way we could guess the tere because it is lengthened from hirek. Let me move on to <clears throat> then prefix form. Is that clear regarding PL affix form? Did you go to letter? Can I move on? Yes, sir. Okay, let me move on. Yes, now we are dealing with the PL prefix form. See, the ordinary form for cal, PL, uh, PL prefix form is this. So you need to be familiar with PL prefix form in terms of the vowel point. Now, if you have ye, baguette, we don't have any problem analyzing it. Why? Because everything is there. The obvious indicator of PS stem, which is the dagesh. So you can easily put PS stem. And in terms of a form, you have the yod. So you, you don't have any problem putting prefix form. But what if we are dealing with this? Once again, praise the Lord, we know the form for sure because of the presence of the yod. So that's why I'm saying, if you have prefix form, praise the Lord because that is the most obvious form. All right. The, the more you study, you will be confused with other forms such as infinitive and participle, you know, and a fixed form. You will be confused. But in, test, in, in what is it, when it comes to prefix form, that's very straightforward. But what about the stem? Oh, I can see the Dagish Forte here. Then are you going to put cast stem? Told you, you need to be careful with the stem whenever you are dealing with middle guttural letter or uh, verb or middle guttural or middle dash verb. Are you following me? Then what are you going to do? Okay, then, all right. What if this one was supposed to be taking Dagish Porte and yet the lash cannot take it? So I guess this form should be lengthened. If this one is the pure stem, now pata becomes comet. What happened? Length. So at least you need to be familiar with this indicator. Now, it is a time for us to be familiar with the bow point. Once again, I normally don't ask my students to pay attention to the bow point many times, but this is the time for you to pay attention to it. So, Sir, yes? The only time we really need to be careful with the, uh, the lengthening then, is when there's a guttural, right? Yeah, in the middle of the letter. Okay. Okay, good. So once again, if you are dealing with a verb, of which second root letter is resh or one of the culturals, then gotta be careful with the stem. Do not simply put kal. And what do you need to do? To see whether or not there is a lengthening in the preceding vowel point. Clear? So in order for you to, to recognize this one as a peer stem, then you are supposed to know what is the expected vowel point under the first root letter for PL prefix form. Then how do you know that this is lengthened? Am I right? So you need to pay attention to this. Um, you know, to be honest, it's impossible for us to memorize all the vowel points. That's why if you look at your um, textbook, and in Hebrew too, you will be officially allowed to use your textbook.
At the end of your textbook, we do have a very important part, which is uh, the verb analysis chart. Uh, page 431, if you pay attention to your textbook, if you have your textbook with you right now, turn with me to page 431. Then it starts with this. Uh, I think I need to show here. Chart, okay? If I move to next page, then it says this. It shows us a lot of, uh, you know, uh, words, the conjugation, we say conjugation. And this one is a strong. The first page, it says strong verb on the right side. So it deals with different stems and the forms. If you turn to the next page, it deals with first cultural. And then first to alle, first to yod, first to nun, middle guttural, middle rash, hollow buff, and germinate, third guttural, third alle, third he. Whew. They are all dealing with different stems and different forms. So depending on what kind of a verb you have, like first to nun, first to yod, third alle, third uh, he, or middle guttural, they are taking all different power points. Welcome to Hebrew world. <laughs> hey, so are you excited about this? And do you think you can memorize all of this? I'm sorry, as a teacher, I don't know much. I mean, I don't memorize much. What a disappointment, but it's okay. As long as you understand what it is going on. So then, my question is, okay, Pastor, uh, if you are going to allow us to use this verb chart, then why do you need to memorize all those, you know, conjugation for even cal, you know, strong and PL prefix? That's a good question to ask. You don't need to if you have enough time for your quizzes. Uh, you know, dealing with your translation quiz, you cannot take a look at all of this. Okay, uh, give me. Give me one, 100 hours, Pastor, I can do it. Let me just check every single ball point. It doesn't work that way. And so you need to know what to look at. Okay. Looking at one sentence, okay, you need to come up with maybe two or three possibilities. Oh, I think, Pastor, this is uh, the PL form of middle cultural letter. Then you need to go to the specific part and check if there is agreement in terms of the ball point. Then if you can see the agreement, then just put it as a PL form and a fix. Oh, Pastor, in case of a ba, do you remember ba? Bet, kamet, alep. Then what do you need to think about it? Two possibilities. What was that? Three MSG of fixed form. Hello, Bob. At yeah. the same time, MSG participle. So you need to see, oh, uh, at least you need to understand what to look at. So, okay, I know that the boy is uh, hollow bob, then I need to go hollow bob part, which is on page 440 and 441. And then what do you need to look at? You have Cal A, Cal I, Cal U, Nifar, Hifil, Hopa, Tolel. What are you going to look at? Are you going to check everything here? You cannot do that. So you need to know, oh, I think this one has something with a fixed form and party form, and just go and check. That's how you're going to use your verb chart. Is that clear? Let me move on. So now Sir, you need to. Okay, I have a yeah. question. Yeah, yeah. Sharon. Uh, the PL prefix form, the strong there, uh, hmm. we, uh, we distinguish the vowel, mm -hmm. uh, hirek and jere. The why strong verb here, the pa. Parked the uh, pata, not pie, uh, not, uh, not hire. Sorry, I, I don't understand your question. Uh, you, you teach us the pie stem, vowel, hire, oh, and jere. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Right, right. Is not hire. Okay, Sharon, I understand your question. Yes. All right. Sharon is trying to let me, I mean, uh, ask me the question that. You know, we normally drive the bow sign from the name of PL. 
So in order for this one PL, then we expect that this EL sound to be appearing. But I told you that only works for a fixed form, not prefix form. One more time, Sharon. That is the um, information which is uh, applicable only to affix form, especially for three MSA affix. So in terms of first and second vowel points, three MSA affix form works. But when it comes to three FSG or two MSG, the other PGN, then the first vowel point works only for affix form. When it comes to prefix, because of the presence of the prefix pronoun, it affects the bow system again. Do you follow me? But having a fixed form, we, we have nothing in the beginning, which is not affecting the bow point in, from the beginning. That's why it's, when it comes to three MSG of fixed form or even the other PGN, the first bow point is not really affected. Do you understand? When we have something like new addition or augment, then it normally affects the bow point nearby. That's why when we have a special ending, then the ending affects the preceding bow point. As a prefix is attached, then it affects the, you know, the sound nearby. So somehow it affects you know, that way. So do you understand, Sharon? Yes. So you cannot yes. expect the, the, the name sound for prefix form. It works only for a fixed form. I think I need to finish as soon as possible. So let me just quickly move on um, to the other slide. As long as you understand how it works and then what's the reason and the purpose of showing this slide here, then that's fine. I want you to pay attention to the lengthening. The, the most important lesson today that you need to pay attention to is this. Do not simply put Q when you have no especially for the verbs of which second root letter R is what? R, uh, Resh, or Gautros. Sir, uh, okay, go ahead. Uh, uh, can, I, can I figure out if the Yold mm -hmm. and Pata always PL prefix? Yold, Pata? Yold, Yold and, Pata here? Yeah. So, uh, you say here only uh, affix form. So, the, when prefix, PL prefix form, you do with pata. Okay, right. I, I think you can, you can do that. But Sharon, yeah. this is not a big problem. Why? Because even you don't need to pay attention to this for you to analyze it. Because everything is given here. Why? Because you have dagesh porte. So in that case, you can easily put dagesh of uh, the PS stem. And you have prefix form. So you don't have any problem analyzing as a prefix form. But why did I ask you to pay attention to the presence of kamet? A pata, sorry, pata. Why? Because without knowing this, you don't recognize this one as a lengthening. So Yes, you still need to pay attention to the presence of a pata, not because you need to understand it as PL prefix form, but because you need to recognize this middle guttural as a PL prefix form. Sharon, are you understanding me? But in order for me to answer your question, yes, it works somehow. So. Uh, if you have yod and pata, then it's most likely, but you need to make sure that this is dagesh here, okay? So if you look at this, you can put ps stem and prefix form, everything is there. So in that case, this pata is not really that important for itself, but for the analysis of middle culture at the PL prefix, you need to know, that's it. Thank you for the question. Uh, I think it's an important question too. So, uh, uh, Elabaya, what is our uh, assignment today? Uh, page 91. Mm -hmm. Number 1, 2, 3, 5, 10, and 12. But it's on Moodle, so you can see the numbers. Okay, so you need to submit it uh, by tomorrow. 
Yeah. Am I and, right? Yeah. And also, let me know if you received your assignments back on Moodle for lesson 14. We are trying to see if the Moodle is working for grading. So just let me know if you received your assignment back with uh, showing the comments and the grading. Uh, I want to just draw your attention to one of the important uh, factors for your assignment. Let's look at this, and then I will be uh, finishing the lesson. Okay. Let me ask you this question. What, what, are, what do you expect when it comes to the indicators of valve conversive? Let me know. Valve conversive. What do you expect? Come on. The first martial uh, art. Uh, I guess. Uh, 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 Pata. Pata. And under. under the purpose pronoun. Look at this. Yeah, what do you have? Okay. Is it verb conversive? No. You cannot see dagesh here, but this is verb conversive. That's why it is important for you to pay attention to this. Now, I want to give you a little correction. You cannot always say that verb conversive always come in the form of verb, pata, and dagesh, especially dagesh. But generally speaking, verb and pata will be kind of important indicators for valve conversive. Then when, when, when does it happen that we cannot see the dagesh porte? When there's there, a can several, there, there can be several cases, but in Hebrew one, you can just simply pay attention to this. When the verb is used in the PS then, and then because of the pronunciation, it affects it, and the dageshi porte will be dropped. One more time. Because of this usage of PS them, it affects it, and then dagesh may not be able to come. So now, the correct information is what? When we have our conversive, do not simply rely on the fact that, oh, it should be three, vav, pata, and dagesh. Without even the dagesh, sometimes it can be what? Verb conversive, especially when the verb is used in the PSTEM. What about this? It has verb conversive, the perfect combination, verb, pata, and dagesh. But what about this? Again, you cannot see dagesh here. Have you ever asked this question before? Um, this is PSTEM, right? And you don't have it. Why? Because it's the peer. It can happen that way. So that's it. And then I hope um, you are, I think this is a really good help. And let me see what else. Okay. When it comes to number six, there are some new vocabulary. So you need to pay attention to your textbook. Whenever you have a new vocabulary, normally the, the meanings are provided in your textbook. So if you really just do your assignment based on my slide, then you may not be able to recognize new words. So still important for you, take a look at it. And in terms of um, uh, the main verbs, I think uh, that's quite uh, straightforward. Uh, sir? Yeah. There's a shewa under the verb, then it's a conjunction, right? What number? Number five. Okay, number, number five. Eleven, number 11, too. Okay, uh, number five. Well, what is your question about? The verb has a shewa under. Right. So that's a conjunction then. Yes, it's most likely. When it is carrying shua, or sometimes even verb appears in the form of a shurek as a conjunction. So it's not really uh, important uh, Understand that whenever you, okay, the verb conjunction will, will always appear in the form of verb and shua. No, okay. most of the time. But even shurek can be the form of conjunction, verb conjunction. So yeah, you're right. In this case, you need to say that. But you got to be careful when the verb conjunction, verb and shua, is it immediately attached to a fixed form, then you cannot consider it 
as verb conjunction. You need to call it verb reversive. Reversive. Right? So that's another thing that you need to pay attention to it. But in this case, it's not directly attached to the affix form here. Are you following yeah. me? Then it's a verb conjunction. It's not verb reversive. Okay, one more time. Look at this. Uh, uh, where are you? All right. Can you see number 11? We have vav, yod, dabar, and u. What is it? Prefix form. But since this one is ps them, once again, you cannot see the dagis. So, but it is still what? Vav conversive. Is that clear? Okay, that's it. I need to let you go. So, uh, God bless you all. And then I'm going to see you tomorrow. Please prepare yourself for the oral quizzes. Is that clear? We're, one more question. Are we supposed yes. to know from 1 to what, from one to 130 or 40 next vocabulary quiz? This week, you have to memorize on to 140. Am I right? Okay. So you have a new 20 vocabularies from 121 to 140. So no matter when I'm going to give you that oral quiz for vocabulary, you will be tested as much as you are required to memorize in terms of vocabulary. So let's okay. say if I, if I take the quiz tomorrow and next week, then you are supposed to know the vocabulary until 140. Okay. Okay. So that's it. So okay. please, please spend substantial hours for this. And this is really important. All right. So make sure you understand the previous lessons. And somehow, whenever I ask you, you know, to tell me the indicators of or traits of this grammatical aspect, you need to let me know. Okay. I'm going to ask you, okay, what do you uh, tell me? about the indicators of PL prefix form. And then you can just tell me whatever you understand. But then I'm going to ask you that what about, what is the special about middle gotorator in terms of PL stem? Then what do you expect? And you need to let me know all those things that you have understood. Okay. So without understanding the lessons, you can hardly answer my questions. Please yes. make sure that you are using your, what is it, uh, group study uh, in an efficient way. I think this is a really high time for you to start having a, a meeting so that you can, you know, take a review. Yes, Do you sir. have any question? No. So is there okay. any uh, reason for your coloring those sentences with red and also blue? Yeah, there must be some reasons, and and actually I did it for uh, the the lessons that I gave before, but it's not really because somehow I need to give some explanation, so I need to highlight it, and it's it has something to do with the special explanation, and whatever is uh, highlighted in red was given as a uh, what is it exemplary sentence for the class, so which means. Uh, those sentences that are not highlighted in red or given as assignment before. But anyway, so not significant uh, here. So, yeah. Any any more question? Mm. All Sir, right. It, yeah. It's just a dumb question. Um, how's our class doing compared to other classes? Are we okay? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I'm hoping. I'm not below average. To be honest, you guys are doing okay, generally speaking, so far. But I'm a bit worried about some of you, to be honest. Not for Hebrew one, but I can see that you will be really, some of you will be struggling in Hebrew too. Because even compared to the previous year students for Hebrew, I don't really see that uh, you guys are somehow as good as before. You know, I'm sorry to tell you, to be honest, but I don't want to say that you are not smarter than them or you are not studying more than what they did before. But somehow it has something to do with this online education. So in a sense, the way I uh, supervise you 
or the way we are taking our quizzes or the way we are dealing with it, uh, classes are not as efficient as before. Uh, that's what I can see. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you know, uh, we, are, we are not doing well. But in terms of general competence with the previous years. So I think you really need to spend the, the, the enough time. I don't know how many hours you have spent normally a week for work, uh, Hebrew. Without spending you know, the enough hours, you cannot really survive Hebrew 2. Once again, I'm not too much worried about Hebrew 1. I think most of you will be able to pass the course. But if you don't really change your attitude regarding this Hebrew language, you will definitely find the Hebrew too really, really challenging if you don't really do your best right now. So uh, do not simply rely on the class that I'm giving you. You need to really do your best in terms of review. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, all right. Okay, so you can leave, but uh, Samson and Dominic and Albert, can I talk with you? Samson, when is your um, terminetics? When does it start? Um, first, it's on Wednesday and Friday. So you don't have a terminetics today? No, not today, but like- uh, Okay, Wednesday, so Friday others can leave. All right, I can see you tomorrow. Okay. And Labaya, I think you can remain in this chatting room too. All right, so thank you guys. Thank you, sir. Adele, would you excuse us, please?